Live from the campus of MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering the MIT Chief Data Officer and the Information Quality Symposium. Well, the lights have come up, the uh, bars are being wiped down, the pool tables are being uh, vacuumed, and uh, we are at the end of another MIT CDO IQ Symposium. Uh, this is uh, our fourth as uh, the Cube, my fourth as uh, as uh, association with the MIT Forum. I'm here joined by my uh, two colleagues, Stu Miniman and George Gilbert, both of whom are first timers at this. So I, I think it might be interesting to contrast our perspectives, uh, seeing things develop versus uh, versus uh, confronting some of these topics for the first time. I know that one thing that, that was interesting to me, I, I think it, over four years of doing this uh, conference, it really seemed the evolution of the CDO role. You know, when we started four years ago, it was kind of a concept and there weren't many CDOs. Now we see 3,000 CDOs, according to Jean Laganza. Uh, we see a, a lot of talk about how the role uh, develops, about where it goes from here. No longer questions of existential questions about whether there should be a CDO, but questions about really how it fits into the organization. And I think a big revelation for me this year was this is not a technology job. This is a relationship job. It's a political job, first and foremost, and it may evolve into more technology-oriented uh, position in the future as, as an organization gets its act, its data act together, but really, most CDOs, their first and foremost task is finding where the information is, twisting the arms necessary to get it out of these, these silos, and begin to put it to, to use. Um, Stu, what, what struck you about some of the things that you heard here over the last couple of days? Yeah, so first of all, uh, it, it was really good. So uh, this, we talked, to, this is a symposium, which means it's a relatively small and, and short event. Uh, the, the quality of the guests were really good. Uh, we talked to a number of CDOs. I'd gone back and watched uh, some of the content for the last few years, and while um, Every CDO is a little bit different, and we don't have kind of a common definition and job description. Uh, when you get them all together in an event like this, well, many of them together in an event like this, uh, they found a lot of commonalities. They felt they were getting beat up for the same kind of things. They found, uh, you know, certain things they could all commiserate, uh, you know, over a panel, a question, a beer. Uh, so, uh, you know, they, they, they uh, have some mandates that they're doing. Uh, many of them are making good progress as to uh, you know, understanding where data fits into their business. Uh, you know, they've got, as Tom Davenport talks, they've got the defensive things of all the governance. Uh, and then uh, we, we found some really good examples of the, the offense that they're doing as to uh, you know, how they are creating new value for the business, how they're um, you know, not just fixing things and kind of trying to solve some of that information quality, which I mean, we've, how many decades have we been talking about things like metadata and you know, is it, you know, is it data link or is it a data swamp uh, that, that I've got there, but uh, you know, helping to work closely with the business uh, and, and drive things that you know, improve the business. And uh, as, as Tom Davenport said, actually, if, if you're not uh, you know, taking advantage of these new tools and you know, getting somebody like a CDO in that type of role, you're going to be left behind by your competition that does this. It reminds me a lot of what we've said about big data for the last few years. You know, data is kind of the oil uh, of, of what our businesses are run. So if, if you're not finding ways to take advantage and leverage what you've got, uh, your competition is, and therefore you're going to be left in the dust. George, uh, what were your takeaways? If I had to um, put a, a name to the CDO acronym, I guess I would have called it, um, or I would call it, the custodial data officer, because they don't really own it. And as uh, you know, going back to uh, like Sue's comment, they're they're responsible for it, um, and they're responsible for its effective use, but. Um, they have to do that, you know, through uh, essentially through uh, um, what's the word? They have no authority, but they persuasion. have persuasion. Persuasion. That was a early onset Alzheimer's brain <laughs> cramp in there. Um, the other thing is, because this is such a CDO-centric audience, we heard all about um, all the the rules and. Uh, about how to maintain the integrity of the data, but we didn't hear really much about the perspective of the organizations or, or and the individuals who want to consume that data. Now, it doesn't mean that they don't exist, it's just that the perspective we got here was, I think, somewhat one-sided. 
and uh, so, George, George, I'm, I'm curious because I, yeah. I think we had uh, the CDO, CDO on from the city of Syracuse, and he said, you know, this position was funded in a group focused on innovation. So while he doesn't own the analytics piece, which is I know is kind of near and dear to your heart, you know, most of the CDOs we talk to is. You know, yes, some of that governance and the quality of data are part of what they're doing, but you know, they're working closely with the business. They're helping to do it, uh, to do more and better things with it. Um, we heard from the federal government people like the open mandate uh, is a little bit challenging because you, you know there's no direction and maybe not funded. But if somebody's hired to be a CDO, um, they've at least got some good executive sponsorship. Uh, they've got kind of a role they're doing, and it's not. I, I didn't hear anybody saying, "Oh, you know." I'm stuck on the side, I'm not thought about it, I don't have good things I'm doing. I just kind of see, you know, kind of analytics and the CDO play together. I'm just curious how your, your yeah, take on that. I guess I'm not, maybe then if I'm not being articulate um, enough. Yeah, custodian sounds almost a little negative that they just needed to clean up some stuff. No, no. Yeah. Custodian means they have uh, sort of beneficial ownership, but not authoritative ownership. They take care of it, but they don't own it. Yes, and, and they, um, while it's under their care, they're responsible for its improvement, but then at the same time, the, the end users, it's their, their consumption of the data isn't always analytic. Sometimes it's just um, exploratory um, and you know, as primitive as business intelligence. Um, but we've seen this sort of um, tension you know, for decades in, in computing where there's, there's the power at the center which wants to keep things sort of clean and tight and then there's the power at the edge which wants better access. And none is right, neither is right or neither is wrong. Push pull between end yeah. users and IT. The end users want control, uh, IT, IT wants, wants to own the data, keep it clean, keep it safe, end users want to keep get as much safe. of it as they can. Keep it safe. I, I think, you know, Sam Edelstein, the CDO of the city of Syracuse, I think had, had one of the most memorable examples uh, uh, of these two days when he talked about, you know, the value of harmonizing data that is in silos in so many organizations. He said, you can send a road crew out and they can do hundreds, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars fixing a road without being aware that there's a sewer under that road that has burst 50 times in the last five years and is going to have to be fixed. So that work is going to have to be all torn up a year from now. And, uh, and it's all going to go to waste. And that was such a, a compelling example, I think, of, uh, uh, you know, writ, sort of writ large of how getting your data act together can, at the very least, prevent uh, wasted money. Yeah, I guess I would add, um, uh, that was a very vivid example. And if I were to use, you know, words that, that come up over and over that I've heard um, in research, you know, prior to coming here was, um, the, the role of the CDO is, is to put guardrails in. You might think of it when you're first learning you know, to ride your bike when you get the extra you know, two training wheels, wheels. Training, training wheels. You know, it's so you don't hurt yourself. It's not, it doesn't tell you which way you can go. It just helps you not tip over. And um, you know, um, when we, especially now when we have uh, this explosion of, of volume of data that, and the different types of data, um, in the old world with the data warehouse, we had to so carefully and laboriously, you know, craft everything before anyone could touch it. Now it's just poured in there, whether we call it a lake or a swamp. But um, it's there probably more than anywhere else that we needed those guardrails so that someone going in there says, oh, I've got the, the right data element, you know, or the right data set for what I need. Yeah, but, but that's a great thing, though, just to be able to pour it in there. I mean, it's, it's such a shift in mindset from having to manage very carefully what goes into the warehouse. Now you have this concept of, you know, let 100 flowers bloom, and we'll, we'll sort of sort it all out after it's all there. Right. Um, final question. If we come back a year from now and, and you come to this symposium again, how do you think the topics would be different? 
we'll be talking about, Stu. Well, I, I hope next year when I come here, I don't hear people asking questions about are the CIO and the CDO, CDO at a, in opposition to each other. We should be able to put that to bed immediately. Uh, every uh, feedback we got is, you know, what, are they always hugging each other? No, you know, these are corporations. There's always politics involved. Uh, but for the most part, uh, they are working together. Sometimes they're reporting to each other, um, but they're not in, you know, opposition to each other. So, we, you know, the, we should be able to get past that narrative uh, that we, we've heard kind of in the media too much. Um, you know, th so that one I hope we can put to bed. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sometimes accused of, of these uh, hard to follow analogies, so I'll try and bring it down to data terms uh, or, or technology terms, but there are companies like Alation and Waterline and I think Informatica, if I can figure out what they're doing, where they will help put in the guardrails that, that the central data organizations want to help you know, keep the data safe and sound. And then you'll see the Trifactas, the Paxatas, the Altrix, the Tableaus, Clicks, um, and Microsoft Power BI's that empower the end users uh, to do what they want. And I don't see any one uh, vendor solving both sides. Uh, it looks very much like end user computing 30 years ago, you know, where we had the sort of IT, you know, repositories, and then the sort of PCs for, you know, end user computing. Yeah, it's so very clear these problems are not going to be solved overnight. They may never be solved. Uh, there will be a role for chief data officers for a long time going forward. Uh, we're out of time. We want to thank you for joining us here at the MIT CDO IQ Forum. Uh, this is theCUBE. We'll see you again. <laughs>